Hello and welcome to another Ambersats Basics video. Today we will basically be going over the way in which rockets work. Now, as you may already know, the basics heads and tails of how rockets work is Newton's third law. For every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. This essentially boils down to the force of a rocket's exhaust being ejected from the rear of the launch vehicle having an equal opposite action of pushing against the rocket itself, propelling it forward. This is how rockets can continue to operate in the vacuum of space, as it's more of a common misconception than you may think that it's actually the uh, action of thrusting exhaust upon the surface of the earth, or the launch pad if you will, uh, that allows rockets to push off into space. This is not actually the case. and. That's basically the, the no, not that's too basic, right? How about we show you the basics behind designing a single stage solid fuel model rocket? That's a bit better, right? It's not too basic. Firstly, what do we mean by a solid fuel rocket? Believe it or not, solid fuel rockets have been around for centuries, originating from China, though originally containing black powder. High energy mixtures have been refined to contain powdered fuels such as aluminium and magnesium, which is then mixed with powdered oxidizers which allow the fuels to burn. This is then all bound together in a waxy binder, and we refer to this sort of fuel as a grain. Oh, uh, as for what's meant by uh, a single stage, uh, well you might have heard of rockets being referred to as a two stage or a three stage. Uh, what this basically is referring to is the number of burning sections that are contained within a rocket. This simple rocket I'm designing here uses one section with a single motor, so it's a single stage. I essentially view multi-stage rockets as multiple rockets that are just stacked up on top of each other. Yeah, that's a basic way of looking at it. So let's start designing our own model rocket. This is open rocket here. You can select all of your major components up on the top right of the screen. Uh, I like to start with the body tube or the uh, cylinder if you will. Here's where you can name your components and input all of the dimensions. Let's call this one the long boy because it's going to be the main cylinder of our design. Oh, let me just fight the units of measurement a little bit. Uh, the children work in centimeters, man. Engineers work in millimeters, so you can be precise. We don't want to be working in cups and eighths of an inch or whatever imperial guesstimates are. It, it, let's just go into the preferences really quickly, change all the units to actual wheel money. Okay, change that to millimeters, meters, miles per hour, you know, that, yeah, that looks good, right, good, man, good, 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 right, let's have another look at the long boy specifications, just clicking up here in the top left, this is your load order, where you can just click on any component and edit. You can see the list of materials that you can uh, set it to, so the simulation can work out its rate and mass and whatnot. I'm just going to use cardboard because that's the materials I have to hand. But, use whatever you want. I guess we can also paint this if we really wanted to. But, right then, for all the boys and girls following along at home, this is it. We've, we've done it. We've, we've made the long boy. Let's have a, have a look at it. Boop. Is this, is, is this a rocket? That, right, let's actually take this out into the real world and see how it acts. Alright, so uh, I've got our long boy and a very high tech piece of equipment known as a piece of string and this will allow us to perform a spin test. This spin test is just testing the aerodynamic forces acting upon our model as we build it up. Now you may notice presently it's given us quite a bit of uh, wobble and it's not flying in a nice straight perfect circle. Now this is because the aerodynamic forces are acting around the tube pushing it from all directions, so we need to channel this. You were paying attention and not just watching the dog, right? Good. Right, let's get back to our design. We need stability, so to do this we need to provide more lift in the right places. To do this we can channel the airflow by using fins. To add fins to a component, you want to click the component you want to add the fins to and then select the type of fin you want. I'm going to go for trapezoidal, rounded edges, right thickness of materials, right material, yada yada yada. Right, so let's have a look at this thing. 
that that's looking rockety, right? That that could rocket, surely. Right, these fins should provide more lift at the rear of the model, which should help stabilize it. But looking at the position of the center of pressure and the uh, center of gravity, you know, the, the, these uh, red and blue dots tells me otherwise. But let's get it built. Okay, I've got some pre-laser cut trapezoidal fins right here that I am going to pop out and sand down. Yo, boy! Right, just so you can see what I'm doing, I am sanding down these flat air resistant edges to a uh, a nice blade like shape almost like a airplane wing where it allows air to be channeled over the edges creating lift where needed right just a quick note if using super glue like I am please wear gloves I'm a trained idiot but super glue was originally designed to fuse flesh to flesh so yeah please wear gloves I'm going to speed through this section because it's, it's just me lining up fins and trying to get the stick. Just to get it on record, I wasn't expecting the glue to take so long to set. Um, I was supposed to be on to uh, doing the nose comb by this point for demonstrations. So let's just crack on and get on with it. So I'm out with my uh, furry assistant, uh, my high tech piece of string, performing a spin test. And as we can see, as Open Rocket suggested, the rear of this model is overstable. The back end of the model is fighting to correct itself and keeps changing direction. Um, so I think it is time that we start to talk about center of pressure and center of gravity. So let's head back and have a look at this. So looking at the stability gauge in the right hand side of the work area in Open Rocket, we can see our stability is over three caliber. That's like three times as stable as we would like it. When dealing with rocket stability, we measure the stability in calibers, the width of the rocket cylinder. We work this out by measuring the distance of how far ahead the center of gravity is from the center of pressure. Once the distance is equal to the width of the cylinder, that's known as one caliber stability. If twice this distance apart, this would be two caliber stability. This could be deemed as overstable as we've just seen. Um, if for whatever reason, the center of pressure was one caliber ahead of the center of gravity, the stability would be minus one caliber of stability. This would be deemed as understable and will be difficult to predict and control. Typically, most stable designs aim for one caliber of stability. Uh, this is a rule of thumb, but this helps reduce any unwanted wobble or effects. Uh, bear in mind, the center of gravity changes as the fuel is deplenished. But anyway, let's add the nose gun. Let's finish building the uh, 2D model. Um, that way we'll get a better idea of what the final uh, stability is going to be. Uh, yeah. So click on nose cone. Um, I'm going to go for conical because that's what I have hold of. Uh, input the right dimensions and right materials and whatnot. Now that those dimensions are all right, let's um, go to your load order. If you put something in the wrong place by spawning it in, uh, just click it in the load, load order. Hold and drag to the position in the load order that you would like it. Right, now because our pointy boy or the nose cone isn't held on by magic, we are going to have to adjust the dimensions of our shoulder. The shoulder on a nose cone is basically the, uh, the area in which you slide into the body tube to uh, attach to your uh, rocket. If you're struggling for a length to make this, uh, another good rule of thumb when designing rockets is to use the caliber of your main cylinder so just the body width once again if needs be then adjust from there accordingly now what the nose cone actually does it's not just cut through the air it's also providing lift for the front of the model this is why the center of pressure has moved forward on open rocket now to change the center of gravity we're going to have to change the position of mass or add more mass 
Now, what is a rocket actually for? It's not just for flying and looking cool, right? Right? Maybe. Um, a rocket is used for delivering payloads, such as satellites. And model rockets in particular also uh, contain recovery systems more often than not. So, let's add in some payloads to adjust our center of gravity. So I've added a top section for uh, payloads. Uh, payloads tend to be at the top of the rocket, the furthest away from the explodey stuff to keep it safe. Uh, sometimes even inside the nose cone. Uh, yes, uh, it has a coupler which is designed to release uh, the recovery system. So we uh, add the shock cord, we'll add a, a parachute. And if you want to simulate a, um, an actual payload, if you know the weight of it and the size of it, you can click the um, mass component button and position it wherever you would like. Right, I, I know what you're thinking at this point. These payloads have brought the center of gravity too far forward. This is not stable. Forgetting one thing, rockets use motors. And I just happen to know that an F-15 solid fuel motor is gonna fit perfectly in here. So after selecting your body tube or wherever you want to mount the rocket, select the F-15 and pop, there you go. Look at that stability. Now, before we actually test this, let's add an engine block in. This is just going to stop the motor from flying forward through the actual body tube itself. Hence why it's called, please stop. Now, I, w I am slightly tempted to cheat here and press the override button to increase the rate of the engine block because this would pull the center of gravity back even further, getting us closer to that one caliber stability. But for now, let's just uh, see how it is, how it performs and Look at this, it's an actual rocket. That looks cool, yeah? Now, apparently because the engineer with a slight history of messing about with pyrotechnics isn't trusted with rocket motors, I'm going to cheat a little bit and um, I'm going to use coins to simulate a rocket motor to weigh down the, uh, the back of the model rocket for our spin test. But solid fuel rocket motors are surprisingly easy to make. So maybe in another video. I'll just speed through this as quick as I can. Unfortunately, I don't have any footage of me uh, tackling the uh, parachute or the shot cord, but trust me, it's in this model. With the sincere hope that it will fly one day, maybe. When I make my own rocket motors. Yeah. Right, so like before, we're outside of a high tech string. I'm going to give it a spin around, see how much more stable this is. It cuts through the air nicely. It's always pointing in the same direction. It's got a very nice action. This is a lot more stable than the previous two spin tests, wasn't it? Squirrel! What? What the dog doing? Huh. <laughs> well. Excuse me. A Three. ball! Oh boy, oh boy, a ball! I do, I do ever so want the ball. Oh boy, I will get it and then bring it. <sighs> Anyway, back to the model. So we've seen how we've been able to improve the stability by using lift on both ends, using both a uh, nose cone and some fins. This has led to setting the center of pressure, which is where all of the uh, aerodynamic forces act through, the, essentially the stress point on the model. And we've adjusted the, uh, the payloads uh, and the motor to set the uh, center of gravity also. Uh, this has created quite a, a stable design. So let's go to simulate and see what it does. I'm just gonna stick to the default settings. As you already know, I'm using an F-15 motor in the simulation and let's see how it does. <laughs> well, that's actually done a lot better than I thought it would. What did I say, like 400 meters was my bet? Uh, this has reached an apogee of 837 meters with a maximum velocity of 370 miles per hour. But now, I'd say it's your turn. You've uh, learnt the basics of how rockets work, the stability, the center of pressure, the center of gravity, the uh, rule of thumb surrounding uh, one kind of a stability so can you go and design us a rocket that will reach let's say 850 meters to beat mine that will return to the surface of the earth safely using recovery system and have a stability of within one and 1.5 caliber as always thank you for watching and find out more about ambassad at ambassad.com